We are back today. I am so excited for what we are building. I don't know, if, I'm gonna age myself here. So I was born in the 90s and I used to love playing the game Frogger. It was like my first kind of video game I would play. I'll insert some images or videos of Frogger. It was just, it was the best. I still think it's one of the best video, well, maybe because I'm not a video game player now, but at the time, it felt like one of the best games possible. It was so cool and interactive. I loved it. Anyways, so what I thought today is because, as you can see, I'm not in my typical setup. I am in Dublin, Ireland for work this week. I was coming here on the plane, and to be honest, it's kind of a long flight and kind of boring. So I'm like, I need to code something. So on the way home, I can be doing something. And I don't know why I had this like idea pop in my head that it needs to be Frogger. So what we're going to say is we are going to build Frogger using Python, get to level four, that's the goal. Okay, no, the cars are definitely speeding up more. Okay, level four, here we go. <sighs> Starting to sweat. Come on, come on. Yeah, here, we gotta break, we gotta break. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, we didn't do it. Probably using Pygame as well and see how close we can get to actually playing the video game. I'm very excited for this. Okay, so for this, we are going to use some AI to help us develop. I mean, AI isn't going anywhere, so we need to lean on it, or not lean on it, but really utilize it to our ability to help us build, not just build faster, but also build better. And today I'm going to use Google Gemini in AI Studio. So you can see here, I have it open, and let's just go through a little bit more so about this platform. So where you can see here is the model you'll select. For me, I'm going to use Gemini 1.5 Flash, but there are some other ones, newer ones that you can choose. You can also choose Gemma, Preview Gemma, I should say, and other, which is pretty cool. But let's stick for this, for this coding example. Let's use Gemini 1.5 Flash. So at this point, I'm going to link Google Gemini in AI Studio down below, so make sure to open it so you can follow along. Now comes the fun stuff. Well, first of all, let's finish going through the run settings. So you can see here, there are a few things that you can control. I'm gonna leave them as is, but you could control things such as your token count. So this is really important, especially if you're going to be using it a lot and you don't want to accumulate way too many different tokens. That's something to be very key. Also temperature. Temperature is key, which will, the higher you get in temperature will allow for more creative responses. So we're gonna do mid temperature. Then we also have JSON mode, which is more so around retur returning model output in JSON format. This is great for developers especially. Also, one of my favorite things is code execution. This is really cool. So it will actually run generated code in a sandbox environment without internet access. So if I would have thought about this when I was on the plane earlier, I could have literally coded this and ran this even without internet access because I did not pay for internet access on my flight here, even without it. So that would be really helpful. And then we also have function calling, which is pretty much as, as it says, return generated function calls. So this is really cool. It's really set up and built for developers like us to be able to successfully give some prompts and create a really interesting project. So let's start by prompting it. Let's start by prompting it with, build for me a game in Python, and brackets and Pygame if you choose that is similar to the video game Frogger. There should be visuals and I can control with, how do we want to control it? I guess we want to control it with my arrows for front, side, to side, and back. Let's start with this. I. I don't know if this is not something most people do, but I like to start with a pretty simple prompt just to see what it can produce to start with, and then I get more into the nitty gritty. But also with that, I'm very aware that from an initial prompt, it's not going to be perfect. And I'm not looking for perfect. I love using this more so as to have a framework, to have something that I'm not starting to code from, especially for things I'm not as familiar with building, like games. It's much easier to start with a bit of background or a bit of code than just like a blank slate. Like I remember, one of my first games I built was, what was it? It was um, Tetris. And that took me days, like hours upon hours upon hours every single day. And there is something to be said about it because you know, you're learning from scratch, you're learning all these things, but you can still do that with AI. And I think it's almost, you just need to reframe how you learn by using it. Okay, so we're using Pygame, we're using the module random, okay. All right, Frogger. This is literally, okay, it's doing lanes. So I like to go through the code to see what's going on kind of thing. 
check for collisions, that's important. Let's try it out. Let's just run it and see what happens. Paste it in here. I'm sure if I go to the top, you can see we need to install something. So now what I'm going to do is install Pygame. Give me a sec here, new terminal. Okay, I do not need to install Xcode right now. Frogger, okay, so give me a sec here. Okay, so you can see here, I'm going to run a virtual environment for this. And what that will really do is for any packages you install, it's just within that virtual environment. So it's kind of nice if you're like me and you already are at max capacity for your computer or you don't want to get there. So let's go ahead and install Pygame. I am using Python version 3 point something something, but regardless, version 3, and that is why I'm adding the 3 in front of everything. I'm gonna kick things off, get started. So let's go run Python. Okay, level one, you can see it's running. Let's go ahead and see how it goes. Definitely can do level one. Okay, level two. Let's see what level we can get to. Okay, they're moving, they're moving fast, but there's still like a lot of space in between. So if you time it, no! I'm so, I was so overly confident. I was like, I can definitely do this. What are you talking about? Okay, let me just pull up my terminal again here. Run Python, let's see. We gotta, we gotta ace this. Okay, wait for the cars to come, I'll be fair. Okay, here we go. Next we need to add music, that would be Level two. Okay, here we go. Level two. No, 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 no. Yes. Okay. Come on. Yes. Level three. Let's see if we can make it to level four. That's the goal. Okay, no, the cars are definitely speeding up more. Okay, level four. Here we go. <sighs> Starting to sweat. Come on. Come on. Yeah, here, we gotta break. We gotta break. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, we didn't do it. Okay. This was really fun though. I really used for this project Google Gemini in AI Studio. Google Gemini is changing the way developers are building. It is super exciting whether you're using the Google Gemini API or using it in this sense where it's, where it's with AI Studio. It is really advanced and I find that it always gives really great answers. So I'm really excited about it. I linked it down below. Go build with it today and let me know what you create. Also, let me know if you know about Frogger or if I'm really dating myself here being from the 90s. Okay, I'll see you soon, everyone.